Hello, Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Lost in Criterion. <laughs> this week we're talking about Silence of the Lambs, a award-winning, Oscar-winning psychological you're, thriller. Are you going to introduce film. me at any point? Oh, Adam? yeah. I'm Adam Glass, and you're... John Patrick Owatari-Dorian. John Dorian. Patrick Owatari-Dorian. Welcome, again, to Lost in Criterion. As I said, Welcome. this week it is Silence of the Lambs, um, a, a classic, uh, it's weird. This movie, this movie is, is at, uh, at once a, uh, a very classic sort of police procedural and, and at the same time a, uh, a deconstruction of slasher films. But anyway, Pat. Okay, Adam, let's do it <sighs> by the book. Okay. Okay. By the okay. book. I'll, I'll have your badge. <laughs> I'm sure you will. First, tell me, what do you think of it? I, what did you think of I it? I liked this movie. I have... I... I did. I have not seen it before. This was the first time I've ever sat down and watched this movie. I've, I've obviously... I've seen... Okay. I've seen references to this movie because it's a very... Uh, Lecter right, is a very iconic has. character. Uh, he, he pops up. Um, but I, I had never sat down to watch the movie. And on first viewing, I liked it. Pat. Okay, now... How I, did you feel about the movie? <laughs> I hated it. As I think I said earlier, I hated it more than I hated Chopping Mall. <laughs> the 1982, I think it's 1982. Probably. Probably. Film about robots going to Chopping, a chopping mall. mall seems like it would come out in 1982. That sounds like a good It's something like that. 1983. <laughs> I, I forget. But the point is, uh, ro- robot security guards going yes, crazy and killing yes. people. No, I'm, I'm familiar. Um, well, those kids shouldn't and have been I hated in this more. after hours. All oh, right. They'd... I hated this more than the Jack Frost, any of the Jack Frost, the horror film, or the or the um, Michael Keaton is a is a snowman. Yeah, the, yeah, I hated it more than all of those. I'm... I do not like this movie. I do not like it <laughs> in a boat. I do not like it with a goat. I'm sorry to hear that, Pat. I am. I uh, I am. But I think it's going to add some interesting tension. To all right. Well, I like the movie. We, maybe we'll hurt each other. Maybe we'll kill each other. <laughs> this movie. This movie is one of two movies to be nominated. Uh, for Oscars that would qualify as horror films. Uh, this movie doesn't really straight qualify as a it's horror not movie. really a horror film. Well, especially compared to the other one that that, that it shares that title which with, is, which is The Exorcist. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, yeah totally. Yeah, The Exorcist is certainly certainly a horror film. This is this is more, uh, you know, a psychological thriller, like I said. It's, um, you know, like I said, and one of the reasons I like it is I consider this kind of a deconstruction of slasher films and there's different ways to do deconstructions and obviously slasher films they're they're very popular 1980s and even into the, and there's been a, a resurgence since the mid 90s um <clears throat> they're they're de- they can be deconstructed in different ways scream is a deconstruction of slasher films the recent um cabin in the woods which is what scream really wanted to be was a deconstruction of slasher films um but they do it they do it in this sort of over top. Scream kind of plays it for comedy. Cabin in the Woods plays it for. Well, Cabin in the Woods is a very good horror film <laughs> on its on its own, but is also a deconstruction of this idea. Um, whereas this plays it for drama, and and that's why you know maybe maybe I get disagreements on this being as a deconstruction of slasher films because of the way it's played. Um, well, no, I can see that <laughs> argument. I don't have a major problem with that argument. My problem is that it, it it may or may not be a deconstruction of slasher films, but more importantly, I don't, in my own feelings, believe it's a good film. Okay, okay. Like and like, I think probably one of the best ways we can approach this, unfortunately, unlike other podcast uh, episodes, is to really go at it very constructionist and like piece by piece. Okay. All right. Because I will tell you what I didn't like about each element <laughs> okay. of filmmaking okay. in this film. All right. Well, let's let's start. Um, well, let's start with with a little bit of cinematography. I want to actually. I want to okay. start with the first scene. 
The first, the opening okay. scene, and this is this is one reason um, that I consider this a deconstruction of slasher films, is the opening scene. We start with a shot of a very quiet lake. Um, all of the all of the titles are in these block letters. It's it's very it's very much um, an opening to a slasher sort of film. Well, and it's see, got that's the weird thing is I would actually say it's more like an opening to a police procedure. Maybe in that. maybe. It, well, I mean, it, I guess it could. Well, be the both. block the block letters it, certainly that's what the it block letters me certainly of. lend itself. Well, more and the, the way police, it pans and, the way and things pans. like that remind me. But of we, that. we we slip into these uh, these suspense tropes um, because we immediately ha- what we see is a woman running through the wood foggy woods, um, and there's swelling dramatic music in the background, and it's set up. Um, if this were, if this were instance, for instance, a Nightmare on Elm Street movie, it could open the same way, but Freddy would appear from behind a tree or jump out in front of her and she'd turn around and run the other way. Um, but instead, we, and this, this woman's our hero, um, and she's, uh, she's running just to run. She's running not out of fear, but she's running, um, for exercise. She's running for training. She is something strong. She is not someone who's going to get killed for having sex with someone in the woods. <laughs> uh, and, you know, she's, she's immediately called away, and she's still, she's still a trainee, but she's called away to, uh, to consult, sort of, on, uh, on a serial killer case. Um, and it's, you know, it's part of that, that uh, is what I'm going for. Is, is she's, she's very much established as a strong character, right from the start. Well, and then, okay, so I know we're supposed to be talking about, we were going to talk okay. about cinematography, yeah, well, but let's just talk about her character, okay? okay? She is supposed to be strong. Yeah. At no point during the film did I see her as a strong character. Really? Because of the way she was acted. Okay. And okay. because of well the timbre of her voice in most of the scenes and everything, I didn't... She is, mostly what I got was ham. She is still acted with with a... Uh, she is still acted with a, a sort of vulnerability. But, no, I, I understand... Well, and I find that vulnerability... I do think it was definitely there. Yeah. And is present throughout the film, overwhelms any strong character element. And I think I see it most of the time throughout the film in that she's supposed to be a strong character, but she very rarely actually accomplishes her intentions with her actions. Well, that's that's true until the very end. Her intentions, I mean, as as the hero of the movie, and I think as the hero of the movie, her intentions are to save the damsel in distress, ultimately. And she okay, achieves and that yeah, goal. She does, but the, when you watch her actually do it, you don't get a feeling of strength. You don't get a knight in shining armor feeling. You get a... And, and I guess there is strength in I guess she's, she's very lucky, I pers- guess, in, in your... Right. Well, that's my point. And we, that really digs into what I... One of the main elements I don't like about the film is I do not really enjoy... And I do think of this more as a police procedural than a slasher film. Okay. Where the police are possibly the most idiotic people oh, on yeah. the face of the Oh, world. yeah. And, like, and I understand. Like, I mean, you get that in TV dramas, but I also don't want, I like TV dramas where that happens. In my, and, and this is, gonna, I'm going to just lay out all okay. my cards. All right. Right now. All right. I do not like films that generate intelligence gaps between groups of people that are in opposition. Okay. Because in real life, they do not exist that way. <laughs> there are, for every well, quote-unquote super genius serial killer, there are super genius cops. No, that is true. But they don't exist anyway, okay? Yeah. Like, super geniuses, which is my main problem with the film, super geniuses, and certainly your Hannibal Lecter's, do not exist. You, you think and Hannibal Lecter is too smart to be the character he, he is? is? He's too... It's not just too smart. It's it's the I have skills that I shouldn't have because I'm a super genius. Okay. It you know what I mean? Like it's the oh, I'm so smart that I just concocted this plan out of my arse. Yeah. It, it's I do not like any drama that features that element. I don't like it when the cops do it and I don't like it when the bad guy does it. I, it's the same reason you know I don't like uh what was it? Uh Criminal Intent, the Law and Order film or a uh, movie uh, television show that had the super genius cop yeah, drove me mad. Yes, our, our idiot savant Vincent like Donofrio. <laughs> right, but but Hannibal Lecter is an idiot savant because he lacks the ability to 
associate with human beings on a normal level. Okay, okay. So <laughs> he is an idiot. He doesn't interact because what the issue is that a real serial killer, serial killer is successful because he blends in with his environment. Uh huh. Hannibal Lecter isn't capable of blending in with his environment. <laughs> Well, maybe you've seen him. He did, he doesn't. But we like, see him only after he was captured. But no, we even see him in whatever, like Havana or wherever he goes to murder oh. the guy. He is not blending in. He is not a successful serial. You killer. don't think that? You don't think that really terrible wig he's wearing helps him blend in? But that, yeah, it's, and uh, like, the, but his, it's the and Bahamas, the, and by then, the way. Like, I think the Bahamas. Oh, I, I wasn't paying but attention anyway. that well. Um, but my point is just I do not like it when they generate those intelligence gaps for the purpose of creating uh drama yeah because i find that as a that is a throwaway way to create drama well it's it's you can create drama without creating one yeah. person or one group of people that is so much dumber than the other group well i find the, competing the problem with other. criminal intent is that it's the good guys that are that are so much smarter than all the others and vincent donofrio just needs to sit down for five seconds and he's got the whole thing figured out and so it's, right, right it's for instance it's the problem with batman the reason bane eventually had to exist within the batman universe was that batman got too good batman batman could have torn anybody down Immediately, so no, they had to you create that with an comic equal. books. You have to do like that yeah. Superman, same kind of thing. Yeah, and, and I understand yeah, it's, you don't it's want why... your good guys to be too good. Yeah, but it's also not fun when your bad guy is too good. When your yeah. bad guy just savants himself out of every situation, he he Batmaned himself out. He did. He he's nothing but walking Deus Machina. You know what I mean? Like he, mm. oh, I did this thing because I'm a super genius and now I'm free. You know what I mean? Okay. Like it's okay. all like that, and like. They generate this, oh, he's a genius psychiatrist, and that's, well, first of all, come on. (laughs) But second of all, like, what, he reads people in this field that's not an exact science so well that he just can manipulate them however he wants, and then, like, he also just happens to be able to, like, concoct this really clever plan to escape from the, the, the cell. Which, by the way, two police officers and both of them go inside? Or Screw you, film. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. So what I'm getting, what I'm getting from you is your flaw. You you don't believe that Hannibal Lecter is a believable character. I do not believe that any of the characters are believable characters. <laughs> okay. Okay. The closest is the main character. She is semi as as a yeah. as a semi vulnerable female lead. She is believable except for the acting. Uh the voice acting specifically the, the well all yeah. the accents maybe no, I think, I think somebody she, in the she face. has a very she has a, it's Jody Foster trying to affect a hidden southern accent and, well, uh, and yeah 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 and then Hannibal Lecter says uh that that accent you so you try so desperately to hide and what she's trying <laughs> to hide it if she's trying to hide it it must be really really bad <laughs> right what like there it doesn't get worse than that yeah. so clearly like where, where was she from? Like, Moon South? <laughs> like, the the south of Mars? Hey, lots of places have a south. Right, exactly. Everything has a south. But, <clears throat> my, I, like, we get into the point. It, it's not the content, per se, of okay. the film. I do not mind. I, li- I actually like films that feature these kind of dynamics. The serial killer and the people trying to catch him. Yeah. I watch crime dramas incessantly. All the time. But the thing is, I do not like there to be a major disparity and the fact that Hannibal Lecter gets away in such a unscathed fashion he gets away because he's a genius he gets away because he just genius magic him way he used his genius magic to escape means that there is a vast disparity between the two groups I think even our lead character is not a match for him in any way that doesn't make for good film you make a good point there I think the problem is that um in watching the movie, uh, you really want Clarice to be Lecter's foil. But in the setup of the movie, in that they're trying to catch Buffalo Bill, they're not trying to catch Lecter. But she's so not Buffalo, Buffalo Bill's Bill, foil either. Exactly. Like, it does Hannibal fail Lecter there. is Buffalo Bill. It does Bill, fail so. there. It does fail there. And Lecter, Lecter is kind of his foil um, in a way, so why are but we so following is fate, her? Really? Fate, <laughs> fate is. <laughs> and I don't I like films where they rely on fate to be the the, the, the deciding factor. Like yeah. I like my characters to have actually accomplished something with their well, yeah. even if the bad guys accomplish something, I want them to have accomplished it. Hannibal Lecter escapes because he's fated to escape, not because yeah. he's like I would have accepted almost any other escape if the escape had been something that was believable. 
but it's not a believable escape. It's every element of it is unbelievable. I did have a problem with this escape in that apparently trained medical and police professionals uh, thought he was having a grand mal seizure, um, well, but, and that yeah, he was a dying then... a dying man. Um, when clearly it's Hannibal Lecter, how did Lecter fake? Take a seizure, but, so no, we, get in, we get into the same problem that we had yeah. right from the beginning. He used his genius magic to make himself appear near okay. death. All right. All that right. doesn't exist. Okay. That's it's, not a it's thing. genius magic. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Every no, time no, we get into no. any plot point, it's because of his genius magic. He doesn't explain how he knows the things he knows. Not reasonably. Oh, well, he just luckily He's happened just to work smart. with a patient that is... One of his patients just happens to be the murderer. It's like... Yeah. Well, no, that's there's a, that's that's there's a fate. lot of conven- there's a lot of convenient things in the movie, and you're right that Lecter is a walking Deus Ex Machina here. Um, and I just don't like film. <laughs> I don't know. I like, guess it just doesn't pull away from from the principles of the story for me. Uh, no, you make I, you make I, a I, lot I of valid points. Your points. I I do understand what you're saying. Like, yeah, at yeah. its heart, maybe it's, it's based on a book, right? Maybe yeah. the book is much better. I can believe that. Yeah. If the book is better written. Apparently in the but book, Hannibal he... Lecter has six fingers on his left hand. Isn't that fun to know? That actually would have made his real character in the movie more <laughs> interesting. Yes. But, um, no, it's just like... But then again, I don't... I don't like anybody's attempt to write genius because it yeah. always comes down to because genius Because it always does. Yeah. Like, <laughs> nobody ever said... Like, and, you know, I've read articles on the internet about this, too, and you get this with, like, House and anything like that. When people who aren't geniuses attempt to write super geniuses, yeah, or even regular geniuses attempt to write super geniuses that don't really exist in the real world, yeah, they end up going to genius magic. What do you and think? Do you think Sherlock Holmes gets into that then? A little bit, a but little bit? there, yeah, yeah, I would have to say it does, but that at least he is occasionally foiled by his enemies. Yeah. And that's the element. If Hannibal Lecter were occasionally foiled by... But no one can stand against Hannibal Lecter. Right. He is a god. Okay. He is a god with genius magic powers. Yeah. And and that's my issue, is that you created... They've created a character that is unbeatable. And then they've arrayed him against Beavis and Butthead, basically. Yes. The law, the law enforcement equivalent of Beavis and Butthead. Because, again, we get into things like... And then you get into things, little things about like procedure that, like especially with the escape scene. It's my least favorite scene in the film, as you might be able to tell. Yeah. Where again, two security or two police officers, and they both walk into the cell. What? No, you're dealing with a person who, in theory, has killed and eaten how many people? Yeah. No, it's just not believable in any way. First of all, why would you ever carry his meal into the cell? Yeah. At all. You just slide that uh, over with, there. And why are you... Yeah, I mean, everything about it is incomprehensible. And I find other elements of the film with the other... At other times that way, too. Like, he makes the guy swallow his tongue. Well, or... What? <laughs> he Again, he's... It's just genius magic powers. It's not a thing. Yeah. I can't convince you to swallow your tongue or whatever. It, it, yeah, it's... That's it. I'm done. <laughs> I hate the film because <laughs> it's right. not it's not a story of people. It's a story of uh, of Superman versus Beavis and Butthead. Okay, okay, okay. Um, I will I will tell you my least favorite part of the movie. Um, okay. Since since we're on parts we don't like, my least yeah, favorite. Yeah, and then we can movie move on to parts you like. It's Hannibal Lecter's last line. Um, oh yes. Okay. Everybody's yeah okay. I wasn't gonna bring that up. I really I want to bring this up because it's so terrible. Um, Hannibal Lecter's last line in the movie. He uh, he has spotted the doctor that was in charge of where he was being held. Um, he's tracked him to the Bahamas, uh, and right, the last line genius magic power. he calls he calls he calls Clarice uh, genius magic actually in the phone call too uh, because how does he know where she is? Um, yeah. or, or that someone will answer that phone during a graduation <laughs> party at, uh, right. at a dorm, uh, potentially. Um, and he calls, and, and, and he doesn't want to admit what he's doing, so he's trying to be clever and subtle. 
Um, but he still <laughs> yeah. has to give her clues because he respects her for whatever, even though she's not really earned his respect. Because as, no, you know, you're, you're right. You're right in saying they're they're not equals in this movie. Um, but uh, he says uh, he says, "Well, I'm going to have an old. I'm having an old friend for dinner," and is such a ridiculously <laughs> bad. Oh, it's, it's so cliched. Cannibal, you know, vampires. You, it's it's so Ooh. overused that to hear but, Hannibal Lecter use it when he's supposed right. to be super genius, Hannibal super Lecter. genius, super genius, so much more clever than anyone else. Says, "I'm going to have an old friend for dinner," <laughs> or whatever. I can't, I can't make that sound. I don't think he actually does the. He does it, but I imagine that he point, did. But, uh, but he should. He really. It, it actually would, would have improved. The it line would punctuate that joke better. Right, it would have the movie would have ended on a joke and made the entire thing a parody. Yeah. I'm going to I'm mm-hmm. going to have an old friend for dinner. Ha, cha cha cha. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. Like curls his mustache. Just give it a vaudeville thing. Have him yeah. have a little showboater hat. Just shake it off and and back off screen. <laughs> but no, yeah, that is a terrible, <laughs> terrible moment. Because yeah. we've really taken, but it, it's it's a symptom of the entire thing, where you have non super geniuses trying to write super genius. Yeah. And that was the best they could come up with. Is something out of a Tintin comic. Okay. Okay. The, 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 it, it, or, you know, it's I, I'm just saying, that, like, you get into, the, and perhaps, again, I have not read the book, perhaps the lady, or I think it was a lady, right? Or was it a man? Who? who wrote the book. Oh, I, that I, this is based I'm on. going to, I'm going to bet it was a man. Um, I thought it was a woman. I, I don't know. It doesn't let matter. Me... Um, but the point is, is that, regardless, perhaps that person did an excellent job of writing the character and created a very real, believable character. But, <laughs> not this time. Not in the film. You get, I'm going to have an old friend for dinner. Ah-cha-cha-cha-cha-cha. Thomas Harris is the guy who Oh, okay, the well, there you go. I'm confusing it with something else. But, um, um I still get to my... My point is still valid, regardless of yeah. the sex of the writer. Perhaps they did an excellent job. I don't know. But the writer of the film did not do an excellent job of making people, and certainly did not make an, do an excellent job of making a believable genius. Uh, and so you end up with, I'm going to have an old friend for dinner. Ha-cha-cha-cha. Ha-cha-cha-cha-cha. And then just the word... And actually, but it does lead into one of my favorite scenes in the film, is after Hannibal Lecter is off-screen, that final of just that street scene. Well, he's not. He's not necessarily. He's not. Uh, he's not off screen though. He's still. Well, he's still at the center of the screen, walking away. I think. Right. I, but he gets far enough away that he's no longer there's, the punctuation there's, of the screen. I think there's a point to that. Um, to that scene in that this is this is America's America's one export serial killer serial killing. It's something we do very well and something we've we've sent out into the world. Um, yeah, I don't know I do, if, I if do analyzing like that makes that it worse. Scene. Huh? No, I actually. Well, what I was saying is, I do like the the cinematography of that last. Yeah, scene. the after crane he, shot at the very after end. after, very after nice. he is no longer talking. <laughs> I do like <laughs> that scene. Okay. If that had been the style of the film, with him as more of a stalker, yeah, you know, creature of uh, violence, but more like a animalistic prey or not prey. Uh, what am I looking for? Well, we don't. We don't carnivore get that. kind of thing. We don't we can't get, that, get that. We can't I'm, get that because he's in a cage the whole time, and the moment right, he gets out of the but, cage, he reacts very violently, which but, is very carnival. Car- it's very he is in very cage, animalistic. Do not get his. If you've ever seen a caged animal, he is not a caged animal. Oh, he's a caged panther, though. Well, he's staying in the in shadows. His... He's staying in the back. He's he's. But he's not in the because you know if you're taking a human carnivore, uh, carnivoristic creature. The way he interacts with the people who come to the cage is not the way that a caged uh, carnivore would act. Okay. His words and his behavior. He should be more withdrawn than he is. He's he's aggressively smarter than everybody else. Whereas an actual monster I think would be more likely to be very, very reserved when trapped. You know what I mean? Well, and I, then the violence would burst out of that. But he's not. Like, he's aggressive even when in the cage when he talks. He, he is aggressively 
I think seeking he's, to tear at people. I think he's reserved, reservedly aggressive, though. He's, he's very reserved in his mannerisms. I mean, he still speaks aggressively. That is true. But, you know, well, he's yeah, always I mean, standing up straight. He's, he's, his, obviously his, his, his look is very aggressive because he's constantly staring at his prey. But I think, I really I think it's that, very. That's not I really think it's very panther esque in the way. In I the way do. He acts. I I agree that like his physical stance, like he's very like. like I think that's played okay, but then okay. the conversations between him and the people he interacts with destroy it for me completely. Like, well, he's always really he's always him. he's always trying to be more clever than the person. And he's I with. guess that's what we come down to again is I do not like interactions between in a film. Or in a movie, or in a book, or a TV show, or anything, between the super genius and the people who, it's a wonder they're able to tie their shoes without choking to death. Like, it's, you know, it's, I guess it's just a symptom of the same problem I was talking about earlier. But, and also just the scenes where he does burst out are kind of hilariously bad. Okay, yeah. When when he attacks the police officer, his, his, like... Going to aggressive is like watching a grandfather attempt to like <laughs> I don't know eat a tree. It was just absurd. It's it was like still, it's still is Anthony Hopkins. He's you know he's he's at least sixty in this movie. If not I know, but and um, and and so what did they almost win there? Or what did they is, did they win an Oscar or did they almost win an Oscar? Um, they okay. won. They won like and four Oscars. What? I think. Okay. Okay. And for um, what? I want to know. Give me a second. And look I'm it trying up. to look on the internet, but it's hard. Silence of the films. Silence of the land. The film. Uh, won um, awards. Five, awards. Five, big five. Won the big five Academy Awards: Best Picture, yeah. Best Director, Best Actor, Best Actress. Man, this was way over yeah. awarded. Yeah, I don't know why Jodie Foster won Best, best her, Actress unless it was a really, really bad. I did not particularly love Anthony Hopkins' performance either. I did but he's still Anthony it. Hopkins. Right, but it's not... Certainly not his best work. It lost best film editing to Terminator 2. Well, come on. Terminator 2 is actually I'm sorry, extremely it lost, well. I'm sorry, it lost, be, lost best sound to Terminator 2. Lost best film editing to JFK, oh. which is a little more understandable. Um, but still, I would say Terminator 2 is a pretty good film. But... Um, no, I'm just saying that in general, like, I did not find any of the performances the peak of acting performance. Because, and maybe, and maybe that, I mean, maybe it's not Hopkins in that situation. Maybe it's the writing. But, like, right. I just didn't, the character just felt flat for me. It was like watching, yeah, it was just, and then, and it felt hammy. All the acting felt kind of hammy. Hmm. It wasn't as subtle as I think it should have been. Like, this could have been terrifyingly suspenseful if it had been subtly played but I felt every person acting in the film was you thought everyone was too too yeah, much it felt hands. almost like a joke it almost I literally <sighs> found myself thinking is this a joke I think I think um Anthony Hopkins gravitas in everything he does uh, lends itself when he when he does something a little more out there like this uh it, it automatically becomes hammy just by the nature yeah, of the actor he yeah. is. I think you have a good point there. It, it just felt really like... I was like... Yeah. When I was watching it, I was like... And I think part of that contributed to why I didn't like it as much as I could have, which is because like everybody felt like a very one-dimensional caricature of a human being to me. Okay. And not even okay. real people, in the case of Hopkins. like This is a caricature of a creature that doesn't exist. All right. Well, I thought, I thought Clarice... Um, being our main character was, I thought she was very well rounded. I, I mean, well, we get well, enough. I, okay, we get yeah. enough of her background. We get enough of her her current state. I think. I think she is a very well established. Okay. Character. Yeah. I'm. I'm sorry. I should have been. Yeah. Spoke better. Um, yeah. She. The character that she yeah. plays is very believable, and yeah. but because of the way it is acted, it because really of the way it's affects acted. the way I felt about it. Like it was really hard to see her as a person with that god awful accent. Yeah. Right, well, I think right. it's it's also for anybody who's spent any time in the actual South. It's not a believable accent. I've never heard a person with that accent in my entire life, except for on film. There's a lot of Southern accents on film that are like that, though. 
Yeah, and they're all bad. Yeah, everybody everybody who tries to affect a southern accent in any movie, uh, it's like Americans trying to sound British. It all sounds yeah. like this really bad, bad, not even like a parody of a southern accent. It's like your only experience with a southern accent it's other is that someone told you about it. Yeah, or you watched a bunch of movies that feature <laughs> yeah. Yeah. people acting with that accent. With that accent, and I, it, it really did affect me. I, maybe it's stronger just because I grew up around people with the accent she's trying to affect. Yeah, and, but like it's, it really, yeah, you're right. She, the actual character as written, is is actually fairly well developed. But again, she, that character is put in opposition against bat, uh, evil Jesus. Yes, evil Jesus. And so it's really hard to deal with that. <laughs> all right, all right. No, I, I understand. Uh, because like, it's, like, a real, it's a Jesus, real person though. put against a force rather than a... Yeah. Than a and it's I could even see that if, if she were more the focus of the film. Yeah. The, the, the human being versus unstoppable force can be a very interesting tale. When the human yeah. being is one hundred percent the focus of the tale, but it's in this film, it is she is not. Yeah, we and we, and we focus so much on Hannibal Lecter that he yeah. is at least yeah. is at least he's he's, he's he's you know Lecter Lecter's an anti-hero in this movie. Lecter yeah. Lecter is the character we are you know focusing our narrative on, and again he's he's the one who ultimately I mean at least his he doesn't actually do it, because Clarice actually does it, but it, he is the reason that our villain, Buffalo Bill, gets captured. Right, so, and that's the problem. So it's actually is, unstoppable yeah. force versus character that doesn't matter, Buffalo Bill. Yeah, exactly. Which is not interesting. Exactly. No, no. It's, you're, you're it's, certain, yeah. you, make a very, you make a very valid point there. Clarice um, versus Hannibal Lecter, where she's the focus, would be a wonderful film. Yeah. Clarice versus Buffalo Bill would have been a mediocre film, but yeah. without, but it would have been a film that made sense at least. Right. Yeah. And, and but instead, it's Hannibal Lecter, evil Jesus versus okay. Buffalo Bill, crazy guy who likes to wear people's skin. Yes. Yes. Because yeah. he doesn't like himself. That's actually you know, one one thing uh, this movie got got uh, complaints about was. Uh, um, oh yeah, yeah. Being anti woman. And, um, and homophobia and yeah, well, anti-transsexual no, and anti-bisexual yeah, and that's that's very because there's no one there's no positive. Well, I mean, it's 1991. There's not a lot of positive gay characters in in movies anyway. But uh, but yeah, it, it is interesting. I think I think the feminism might have a might have a valid point uh, because we really only do have the one strong female character, and she's very well rounded, but she's also. You know she's she's flawed, and no one else is shown as being flawed. You know none of the male characters who are strong, especially Lecter, are showed as having, you know, flaws that inhibit their character. Hannibal Lecter obviously has flaws uh, in being a a human, um, right? <laughs> because he's he's a crazy murderer, but but he doesn't have flaws in achieving his goals, and you know obviously you need you need flaws because. Flaws are what give you something to do, and something to do is what makes a film happen. A right, story, right. <laughs> a like, story needs someone to have something to do. Yeah, and if but, Hannibal Lecter had had, if he had made mistakes, yeah, and the opposition had made mistakes, but he triumphed because, not because he's better, but because yeah. that's just how things turned out, or yeah. his mistakes were slightly less severe. That would have been a much more believable situation. But instead, you get yeah, yeah superhero. Doesn't make yeah. mistakes versus vulnerable woman who makes mistakes. Yeah, and, has and, flaws. and and of course Buffalo Bill, but but Lecter's not really against Buffalo Bill because Lecter already knows everything. Lecter right, could, exactly. Lecter could he's, directly he's point them to yeah, could directly point them to Buffalo Bill. No, you may you you you've changed my mind here. I, I, I'm I, sorry. I, I know you yeah, enjoyed the film. No, it's fine, and it's I don't fine. think it's a bad film. It's just was a major disappointment after I've heard this film talked up for how many yeah. years? Yeah, obviously. I mean, like, I all mean, the awards it's won, and, like, every time anybody talks about serial killers yeah. in film or in TV, it, this comes up, and it's like, but I've seen better TV dramas that feature serial killers, frankly, <laughs> that had more believable serial killers. I think... Cheap, low-budget TV dramas. 
So yeah, no, you uh, you definitely uh, you have something valid here. Um, I think I one thing the world's mind with this. <laughs> may, may, no, I doubt that. But no, I don't think um, so either. I think one problem that I don't, I I guess I I kind of just a minute ago downplayed the anti any sort of anti homosexual or anti transsexual sort of thing. I think I think my problem uh, my my issue there is is that while there are no obviously no positive examples of those sorts of characters in this movie, um, I don't know if. I don't think that Buffalo Bill is necessarily demonized because he wants to be a woman. I think his, and, and I think Lecter says this at one point, and so it's, I guess we have to take that with a grain of salt if it's Lecter talking about our character, even though he's apparently very trustworthy, Hannibal Lecter. Um, <laughs> trustworthy, uh, yeah. evil genius. Yeah, uh, but, uh, but he does say that, you know, he doesn't want to be a woman for being a woman's sake, he wants to be a woman to not be himself. Uh, Buffalo Bill does, and and just a woman is the alien thing to him, which which makes the movie even more li- less less anti transsexual and more anti woman. I think. Well, and you actually, know. that's what really kind of bothers me is there's a comment on the Wikipedia page from oh. a person talking about you know how it's anti female, right? Uh, uh-huh. And her point I don't actually like. She talks about like evisceration, skinning, but it's actually not that part that I think is misogynistic what is misogynistic is again there are all the females in this film are victims including yes. Clarice she is victimized okay. by Hannibal Lecter when she talks to him he dominates her destroys oh, yeah. her <laughs> no that is there true, is true. Psycholo- psychologically obviously woman. but yeah but I mean there's not a single and then like he even his end statements like oh I'm not coming after you Clarice don't worry that's just another thing. It's like that's again victimizing her. Well, and he doesn't. He and says he says bag. I'm not coming off. He says I'm not coming after you, and I I I'd like you to afford the same respect. And she says she can't, which means by nature of the agreement, he'd have to come after her, right? Because because she's going to come after him. And yeah, yeah. In the end, there is not a single female character in this film that is not a victim. Oh no, there is one. Who? Clarice's roommate. Okay. Sorry. There's not a single <laughs> she, She's completely irrelevant, and I don't know her name, and I don't think she was ever named on screen. Right, but. sorry. There's not an actual female character. <laughs> but she character does have lines. She does a... have lines. Right, okay. So <laughs> she may or may not be a victim, because we don't know her. Uh, yeah. But I'm sure if they had given her lines, she would have been a victim. <laughs> or I mean, if they had given no, her a character, did. she would have been a victim. Yeah. My yeah. point is, it is extremely, an extremely misogynistic film in that way. Yes, yes. And I... And no, I do not necessarily think it is directly anti-bisexual or anti-transsexual. Although I do yeah. think it paints a picture of a psychology of a person that may or may not be a real person. Yeah. In Buffalo Bill, like his way of transforming himself is to become a woman by killing yeah. women. He, and That doesn't seem like... He could be becoming a goat just as easily. Right, I mean, yeah. It's... He could be off murdering, you know, whatever, yeah. squirrels to make a squirrel suit. Yes. But he yes. picks women and that's... Where things take a really negative turn. I mean, obviously, killing women to wear their skin is a negative turn. But I mean, like, uh, yeah. It, and then, yeah, they say he's not gay. He's not a bisexual. He's not transsexual. And Hannibal Lecter even says so. He's not an actual transsexual. He doesn't yeah. want to be a woman. He just wants to not be him. But then again, he could have been anything. Then he could have been trying to turn himself into Mothman. Yeah, and and Lecter Lecter says that he's not a transsexual, but he also says that Bill himself believes he's a transsexual, and we can't right. And if you believe we, you're a transsexual and you're making yeah, those are your motivations. Right. So his motivations are that woman is foreign to him, so he needs to become w- woman so that he isn't himself anymore. Right. Uh, and that the the foreignness of woman is very is very. It's anti female, right? And and, yeah, the, and the I weird think. thing is, is that there's it's like, oh, that's the fir-, and then like even on this Wikipedia quote from the director, it's like, um, that's the fur- furthest thing away from himself that he could possibly be. No, that's not. It's still a human no. being. The furthest thing it's he could be away being. from himself would be like a rock. Yeah, exactly. He could, Some he could be killing objects. rocks. Right, exactly. He should be killing rocks to build a rock suit, right, uh, right, so that he become, can be a rock man. Right, right, exactly. Um, because then he would truly be as far from himself as he could be. Yes. So really, yes. Buffalo Bill should just be catatonic. 
<laughs> and, and, but then where would the movie be, Pat? <laughs> well, it would be Hannibal Lecter versus Clarice, Which and it would exactly actually be interesting because film. Clarice, yeah. yeah, Clarice needs, yeah, would have had to be exactly. the foil for Hannibal Lecter, which would have made yeah. her which, a stronger. Which character. means that, and he would have had to have some sort of flaw in order right. to actually not win, because we can't have the bad guy win. Right. Which is why, which is why Lecter has to be an anti-hero here because he's not. Because yeah. otherwise, it's anyway. just the bad guy winning. Yeah, yeah, so um, basically what we've realized is that Buffalo Bill needs to be a catatonic rock man. <laughs> yes. Well, not a rock man, an actual rock. Oh, yeah, sorry. A man because a rock man, he would still rock. be. Yes. The point is, is, is that, yeah, in the end, I hate this movie. Also, I want to point yeah. something out to you because I'm enjoying reading the Wikipedia page for this. It's, okay. It's nominated AFI's 100 Years, 100 Movie Quotes. I want to read the two movie quotes that have been nominated and selected. Number one. A census taker once tried to test me. I ate I ate his liver with some fava beans and a nice Chianti. Um, yes, that is where. He yeah, he does that. do that. Um, now here's my problem. Okay, first of all, also not a clever, <laughs> oh, no. not a clever line. Okay. Uh, no, and then the next one. No, is I'm nominated. looking. Yeah. I'm looking at it now. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking yeah. at it now. Well, and I, I, feel I want bad. to reveal. Okay, I want to reveal. All right. So okay. the point yes. is, is, first of all, what did the census taker try to test him on? The census. <laughs> It's not a test. Did he did he ask where his parents were from? Yeah, is that was that the test? Collection. It's not a test. It's so it's apparently, not a test. Hannibal Lecter doesn't understand what a census is <laughs> and thinks it's a test. Well, that's that's his flaw. Second of all, that's how does Hannibal one. Lecter get through medical school if he eats everybody who tests him? <laughs> well, Third of all, um, pr- I ate his liver with some fava beans and a nice Chianti. It's just a stupid line. Yeah, it just is. It's, I mean, I don't need to explain why it is. It's just coming right out and saying that he eats people, which removes all the subtlety of this character. Other people can mm-hmm. say he eats people, but the, the the serial killer cannibal should never actually directly say that he eats people. To be interesting, right? He should never. Yeah, I don't. I think he. I'm pretty anymore. worried about his pairing Chianti with. With, with liver, <laughs> liver, I don't think that. I don't think well, that. Well, I'm just I mean, worried about the fact that he eats fava beans. Ugh, um, <laughs> disgusting. Um, but okay, but yeah, again. So census taker tried to test me because Hannibal yes. Lecter thinks censuses are tests, and he eats everybody who tests him. So how did he get to <laughs> medical school? But also, we get into the point that like, what does he? The super genius, evil Jesus, doesn't understand what a census is. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. So All right. there is that one, and then the next one that was nominated but didn't win. Thank now that one, goodness. That one, we should we should point out that this did make the list at number twenty one. Yeah, that one made the list of the top one hundred movie quotes at twenty one, which is yeah ninety nine. Well, actually, it's a hundred too high. Um, yes. <laughs> so next one, nominated yeah. but not not winning. I do wish we could talk. We could chat longer, but I'm having an old friend for dinner. Um, yes. So, what? Really? Yeah, that no, that's not a good line. That's no, that's it's just even within the context of the movie, that is not a good line, and it's certainly no. Actually, I'm just gonna go. Let's just continue talking about these AFI 100 things, okay? So we also have <laughs> AFI 100 years, 100 heroes, and 100 villains. They have Hannibal Lecter, yeah. number one villain. Hannibal yes. Lecter cannot be the villain of this film. No, he's not the villain of this film. So. Right there, AFI. So, um, so Silent and then Clarice I, I, Starling, number six hero. She is not the hero of the film. Not really. You're right, because Lecter really is the, the hero, hero of the, the film. film because he he does all the all the work. Yeah, he is the one who foils the villain. Yeah, side characters. I mean, also ulti- foil the villain. Ultimately, Clarice is the one who kills the villain and but stops the villain. But that's shooting the girl, the but she only does it considering that yes, he has been stopped because, prior to that, basically. Yeah. It doesn't matter if the girl dies or doesn't die. The killer, the main bad guy, the villain, will yeah. fail in his pursuit to become what he is not. Yeah. And because, he will, he will fail because of Lecter's. He will fail. Yeah. And it's because of Hannibal yeah. Lecter. Yes. Not because of Clarice Starling. They do suggest, actually, because of... Uh, we'll, we'll get into that real quick. They do suggest that Lecter makes a mistake there. Because uh, the FBI is able to figure out... Um, where uh, where Buffalo Bill lives, well, it's not actually where he lives. And I did like that scene where the FBI 
their SWAT team is getting ready to go in the house, and we see uh, we see Buffalo Bill going and uh, you know dilly dallying, and then the bell rings. Yes, that and the reveal that it's actually that, that's it's well a, directed. Yeah. <laughs> it's a well directed. It's very suspenseful. It's a well edited scene because you know the bell rings as, as as we see the SWAT team hit the doorbell, and and the bell rings, and then we see Clarice hitting the doorbell, and the bell rings, and it's revealed that Clarice is at the house where Buffalo Bill is, and that the house that the FBI is actually at is 400 miles away and empty, and it's a great moment of suspense. It really is yeah, well. There are that is that is good that directing is in this film. Probably the best scene in the movie, I would say. I really think so. Yeah, that is very good, and, yeah, and you, I bought into it too, 100. percent Hook, yeah. line, and sinker. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, it's that is a good scene. I would like to point out that <laughs> I'm now reading the Wikipedia page rather than really like doing anything okay. else. Um, Originally, Hannibal Lecter was meant to be played by Gene Hackman. Oh, that would have been... That actually would have been cheesier, I I think. I think I would have liked it more, though. Yeah. (laughs) Just because I like Gene Hackman a lot. I don't dislike Anthony Hopkins. I'm just saying, I really like Gene Hackman. So it was number 65 on the 100 Years 100 movies, and then 10 years later, when they did the second 100 Years 100 movies, it was number 74. So it is. It is working its way down. So I think so. That's eventually, good. it'll be expelled. Yes, eventually it will be expelled with the one hundred um, years. Well, but it might just be expelled by time if a hundred years passes. Notice how on the uh, the American uh, the American list of hundred best films, uh, none of the movies we've watched so far have been in the top ten. <laughs> uh, Where do you see that? I, I I clicked on the link oh, to you the hundred years hundred movies. None of our yeah, none of our uh, really yeah. Oh wow. And and certainly, I mean, a lot of the films we've watched so far have been you know certainly in my top ten list. Well, just we, from we watching have them. watched my new top one, I think, or at least close yes, to it. Yes, four hundred blows is certainly certainly up there. Yeah, not a movie, not a movie that uh, American audience have a lot of uh, a lot of appeal to, I guess. Yeah, so. but it's unfortunate because it's a great film. But yeah. okay, well, basically, I think I've converted you to my side. I uh, yeah, not you have not 100%. more or less, and I, it's not my not hundred percent. I, I still the appreciate the movie. I really I, did enjoy yeah. some parts of the film, but it was really overwhelmed by a lot of my negative experiences with it. Yeah. And I'm really disappointed yeah. now with everybody I know who quotes this film a lot and yeah. and and says that it's one of their favorite films. I'm now disappointed with those I think, people. I think. Something, something I just thought about, and you've been working toward it. Um, that end scene with the phone call to Clarice. Um, what it, what it really suggests is that Lecter has accepted her as an equal. That right. he won't go after her if she doesn't go after him, and there's no reason for him to have done that. Right. She didn't. She earn had, it. and he. She has yeah. not. Yeah. He just gives no, it you're to her. He, right and he dares ex machina as a sequel as well. By yeah. by giving her credit she doesn't deserve. She's not capable of catching yeah. him. She's yeah. as incompetent, or not quite as incompetent, but nearly as incompetent as the other pol- law enforcement officials that we see yeah. in this film. What they what we need is the idiot savant from Criminal yeah. Intent. She, Those and she's two she's less competent because the only reason the only reason she you know gets any information whatsoever out of him is that she completely, you know, gives away all of her weaknesses. Right, I mean, she, exactly. She lays herself out. She sacrifices her background in order to, you know, get the information right. from they, him. And they had, she doesn't... Yeah. Go ahead, sorry. At no point does she turn the tables on No, him. and that's the thing. The closest we get is her lie about where he's going to be sent if he yeah. tells her. But but there's no, there's no suggestion that he ever believes that. Right, and also, she didn't come up with it, right? Wasn't yeah. it her boss? Yeah, it was her boss. So he's like, oh, we had to try it. It was a gambit worth trying. It's just, yeah, she's not his equal. Um, no. Yeah, if they had even shown her lying to him and him not on detecting her, on, her, on her own accord. And him not picking up on it. Yeah. That would have made her that capable would have been fine. of defeating him. Yeah. Yeah. But she's, she can't. She just tells him the truth about herself. So she is victimized by him. He is, he, in every way, except for physically, has basically raped her. Yeah. Like, he is 
stole, stolen all the power from her in their relationship. Yeah. No, you're absolutely and right. And she's his equal? No. Yeah. No. And she's she's number six on our 100 years, 100 oh, heroes list. Yeah. My goodness. Um, yeah. And I don't know if I can... I don't know if I can do that. I'm not, I'm not sure I can ever trust uh, AFI again. <laughs> well, I don't know if we ever could. No, I, I never with. have, but I, I've never actually also looked at the list. But now they... Now I definitely can't, right? So... There was there was a time I will point this out. There was a time where uh, I considered suggesting that we do AFI's hundred movies. Thank goodness we um, didn't. As as this instead of the Criterion, just because it was a shorter list. Um, but uh, I'm looking looking at the comparative list just with what we've seen. I'm very happy we didn't. No, I think we've made a good um, choice. I mean, this one has some duds on it, obviously. Well, there's Armageddon right, coming right, up later. Exactly. But uh, <laughs> in general, I've I've enjoyed as many films as I haven't enjoyed. So we made a good choice. Yeah. Yeah, no, you're, you're right. I think you're spot on with Silence of the Lambs. I, uh, I still, you know, I like the movie, and it was just, it was the first time I'd seen it, um, and you know, maybe I didn't quite, <laughs> maybe I was, I was turning and tuning out a little too much. But I think, I think you really are spot on, and it's not, you're not digging for anything that you've said. It's all very surface. Um, so, and I don't think I think, I think you're right. Wrong. I, no, it's, it's, it can no. be very, it's a very. I mean, if I were not. If I had not been told how wonderful a film it was and how many Academy yeah. Awards it had won, I would have not treated it quite as harshly as I did. But, I mean, I was told basically that this is the greatest film ever made. It felt yeah. like. And it's, it's not. not. It's it's, not. It has serious flaws. So, yeah. yeah. Enjoying the film is not right. Really. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're right. I don't know if I can argue with AFI's listing him as the top villain, though. Because because while he is not the bad guy if of this he movie, had he is been certainly a villain. villainous. He would have been a very good villain. He is certainly a villainous character, yeah. um, but he would still need to be flawed. I mean, it's like right, it's yeah, like it's... Uh, it's like Final Destination movies where the bad guy is just yeah, death. Right. not even a personification it's of just death. death. It's just it's death. An undefeatable um, force. It is an undefeatable force. And There's that's no reason. Not really that interesting. Yeah, it's not. I mean, what well, you it's do, not. you get no. in. You could get it. You get into sort of a more like. Uh, like Greek tragedy sort of thing, where you end up pushing a, a rock up a hill for eternity. Yeah. That in itself yeah. could be interesting if you had a real person, like we said, against an unstoppable force, but not the unstoppable yeah. force as being the main character. So, eh, whatever. Yeah. We're I'm, uh, that's well, I, that we run the risk of repeating ourselves too much, but yeah. I think this conversation was very thought provoking. I thank you for it. Well, thank you, Adam. And I think we should. I think we should. End yeah, here. I think it was a good uh, next conversation. Time. Yeah, good conversation. Good to hear. Right. Next, uh, next uh, time we'll be talking about um, what is next. Well, we'll be doing we'll be doing uh, three in a row. I think next time. Uh, uh, yes, Hiroshi. We're we're getting out of America again. Hiroshi Inagaki's uh, Samurai series one, two, and three are all on the and list. And I believe we might um, have a special guest. Uh, we might have a special guest if I can get a hold of him. Uh, <laughs> I hope um, we do. I think it'll be nice to have a special. My guest. friend. Our friend Donovan, who heard us talking about Seventh Seal, uh, has de- or not Seventh Seal, Seven Samurai, uh, has decided that he is an expert on Japanese cinema, so he should uh, he should join yeah, us. I'm uh, looking hopefully, forward he doesn't to it. talk too much. Uh, it's it'll be it'll be fun to have him around. Um, these movies, by the way, star. Uh, speaking of Seven Samurai, um, uh, star Toshiro Mifune, uh, who was the uh, you know the sort of comic relief uh, samurai in that yeah in that movie. But certainly an actor I enjoy. It'll yeah, be interesting this to see is him playing be, a much more uh, much more straight role. So yeah, I'm very excited about it. We'll see you next time for uh, Lost in Criterion. Yeah. Thanks for listening. And, yeah, uh, adieu. Next, talk to you next time.